Hey everybody, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we're chatting with Colin Bletsky from Must Grow Biologics. But before we begin, I'm just gonna quickly remind you to tap on that subscribe button, please. Hey Colin, welcome back to The Dive. Thank you. Okay, so the company recently signed an exclusive evaluation and option agreement with Sumitomo Corporation, a Japan-based company. So why was Sumitomo the right partner? And what are the opportunities this agreement brings? Yeah, and I guess the biggest thing is when you look at Sumitomo, they are very well-rounded and have a very big business, right from production agriculture all the way to food, uh, processing, and, and everything down the line. Um, the other part about Sumitomo that's really key for us is they're very well positioned right across the Americas. Uh, if you think of their strength in South America with their business units, you think of their strength in North America, um, it was very key for us. So that was number one. They have a very big scope with um, a scope that covers every single one of our, our, our business units, whether that be pre-plant soil biochemication to the bioherbicide, as well, all the way down to the post-harvest uh, food preservation. Um, and so that, that's, that was big. The second one is if you look at the quality of their R&D and development, uh, we truly believe that they will be able to help us accelerate our technologies in many parts of the world where we would have had to either slow down or go, um, you know, take a bit more time. So if you think of countries like Brazil, Ecuador, Chile, uh, Mexico, um, even into Colombia, we do believe that they can help us accelerate that. So um, it's, it's a very key partnership for us on a uh, technology side, on the development side, as well as future, hopefully, into the commercial side of things as well. So could Musgro enter similar agreements with other conglomerates? And what would those potentially look like? Uh, yes, we can. So outside of North and South America, we do still have freedom to operate and, and work with other uh, organizations, whether that be Europe, uh, Asia, into Africa. Um, so any of the agreements, we, we could look at multiple different ways. We can look at a very similar type of structure with what we're doing with Sumitomo. We could look at other structures as well. And, and there are um, lots of ongoing work in other parts of the world right now, currently. And if you think of the opportunities in Europe, you think of the opportunities in Asia, India, Africa, uh, they are tremendous. So we do we still have freedom to operate in those parts of the world with other organizations. The company also announced positive carnation trials with Gowan Group. Can you tell our viewers more about the trials and what can you tell us about the overall economic importance of carnation flowers? Yeah, and, and I would say it's not just carnation flowers. It's, it was done, the work was done with carnations, but it's also, if you look at the entire floriculture industry uh, globally, um, you're looking at a, a plus $20 billion marketplace uh, with, when it comes to flowers. And it's, it's becoming very critical in the flower industry around the world to have a reduction in pesticide use and a reduction of uh, synthetic products. And the big part of it is a lot of flowers are grown in, in Southern, South America, other parts of the world and shipped to areas where chemicals are being banned or deregistered. And so it is very critical for growers um, to find new solutions. So it, it is a very large industry with um, a very high value industry. Um, the trials for us were actually uh, very positive in, in the line that We've seen very good results in controlling the key diseases that they're having trouble with, as well as having a potential impact on the plant health and, and the impact of how the flowers grew through um, some of the other challenges they were dealing with. So um, for us, it was a very good understanding of controlling the, the key the disease and, and pest, uh, but also having some new understanding of what we do and how we impact the plant health and actual quality of the product and, and um, everything down that line. So it's uh, it was very good uh, data, and, and we look forward to the future work into that flower industry. All right, awesome. Okay, so in Q1, the financials stated a $3 million cash balance. How do you intend to deploy this capital? Yeah, and, and the, the simple answer for this is just continued development of our pipeline. We have a very diverse and broad pipeline when you look at all the different key areas. So we're going to be utilizing a uh, majority of that capital to continue to expand on that. And the other part is just operational expenses to really accelerate and continue the work um, that's ongoing, whether that be in regulatory or market development. So um, those are the key areas that we're, we're developing and, and moving our capital towards. Okay, so as you mentioned, some pesticides are being phased out due to concerns about their safety. What distinguishes your technology from your competitors? 
Yeah, and so when we look at competitors, um, we view it in two lines. We view our competitors as a, as a synthetic chemical industry, as well as um, potentially other biologicals. When we look at other biologicals, the key differentiation point is for our product is the way the product works, the ease of use of utilizing our product on at farm gate and, and farmer level, uh, the shelf life, but the main thing around it is the activity. Our technology continues to work um, in what we see very similar to what a chemical will in controlling um, diseases, uh, pests, nematodes, as well as on the efficacy side of things. So that's, that's really key. When we look at the chemical side um, and uh, working against and, and competing with chemicals, uh, and you mentioned this, they're, they're getting deregistered or banned in lots of parts of the world. And you know, one of the key um, products around the world, glyphosate or Roundup, um, continues to get pressure and bans and, and continue with lawsuits and many other aspects around it, um, even with their impact potentially in the soil. Um, what we're doing is trying to see how we can um, either complement, reduce, or even remove glyphosate in certain parts of the world and, and work with these organizations and countries to bring our technology in. So um, a key differentiation point is our technology works. It works consistently. It's still natural, it's organic, it's made from food grade mustard, and it's economical. So we do have all the best of all worlds with our natural organic technology. So do you think biopesticides can fully replace synthetic chemicals? How effective are they, especially in harsh climates like Western Canada? Yeah, there, there is a potential, but I always say this um, in a kind of a way a farmer will look at this and, and still being part of my family farm, um, our technology is good. It's going to have a very big impact, but you are still going to need other technologies. So I always look at it as a tool in the toolbox for farmers to use. And there's many different tools a farmer can utilize. Um, we do have the impact and potential to replace chemistries in certain markets, um, certain geographies, and even in geographies like Western Canada. Um, in Western Canada, though, I'll be honest, we are looking at trying to control diseases that chemicals don't. And we've had uh, efficacy and, and validation in lab and greenhouse, and we're moving that to field now. Um, to say that we're going to re remove all chemistries around the world in every market, um, that's not a statement we can make. Um, I would say, though, we do have the opportunity to replace or reduce the amount of chemistries used in many parts of the world. And, and I'll give you an example. Uh, in the U.S. Um, right now, there is one chemistry that's being used that's roughly over 50 million pounds of use in the US marketplace. That's That same chemistry has already been banned in Europe. Um, we potentially have the opportunity to look at how can we reduce the amount of that chemistry being used by incorporating our technology in, or even replacing it because we do have data showing very similar types of uh, effects in the field. So there's a lot of work still to be done on can we replace all chemistries, which it's not gonna happen. For the ones that we're targeting, we are looking at how we can essentially reduce and replace those in our, in our key marketplaces. Okay, sounds good. So one last thing before you go, are there any key events that investors could look out for for the remainder of the year? Um, there will be some key um, conferences that we will be going in and uh, I know those will be updated on our website and, and uh, released soon. Um, we're also looking at some key uh, data sets coming in um, in Q3, Q4 this year. So that will be, announced when we do have uh, those data points in. Uh, we continually go to different investor events, um, different trade shows, and, and looking at how we can um, expand the story and, and expand the knowledge on muscular biologics and, and what we're doing and, and why, we're, why it's important with what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, awesome. It all sounds great. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Colin, and giving us the update. Great. Thanks for having me. Anytime. <laughs> thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be back again tomorrow with more great content, so stay tuned and hit that notification bell.